Good afternoon, everybody. I was asked to speak English. Uh, I'm not sure if it was a joke or uh, should I actually. No, I should speak English. Okay. So, as you saw, the movie Matrix of the Dead they just plugged me in and now I speak English. Um, my name is uh, Wojtek. I'm uh, obviously Polish. I work for Motorola and I'm in charge of security services for Motorola for both uh, our internal customers and external customers and also look after about 30 research centers from a security standpoint uh, all over the world. It looks much, much more exciting when I say it compared to the everyday life. I wanted to, um, actually, <coughs> I'm, um, I'm here between the, uh, the beer, uh, I'm the last obstacle before the beer tonight, so um, as I, I'm, not, I'm not really sure why I got this spot probably because nobody likes me here, but um, I'm going to try to be short. Um, I, my first choice for the presentation was about critical infrastructure, but somebody s has stolen me the, um, the subject. I'm not sure if the, ha, ah, hello. <coughs> so to check how good the presentation was, a quiz. I, uh, I work uh, a lot in uh, critical infrastructure. What is the organization which has to accept and approve changes, especially patches, in SCADA. Okay, now try to guess. This is an American uh, organization. I'll start with that. That would be nice, but no, it's funnier. No, it's funnier than this. It's um, critical infrastructure is a very difficult subject because the organization which oversees the, uh, the deployment of patches in uh, critical infrastructures is the FDA. The FDA is the Federal Drug Administration. It's interesting, it's one of the most interesting parts in security you'll meet. This is an organization which actually gets a request to um, update certain pieces of the infra infra uh, critical infrastructure and then they have no clue and this is why it is like it is. I'm extremely sorry I couldn't be at the presentation because I'm off the plane now, but um, critical infrastructure, I've been telling for years and now somebody stole my subject. This is the subject of security for 2008 and beyond. This is one of the most important, much, much more important than mobile, wireless, blah, 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 security. Uh, this is probably the most critical security issue which we are going to face in, uh, in the coming years. So um, it's a very good thing you had these uh, experts in the field. Now, is there a thing here I can change slides with? No? Okay, so let's try page down. Okay, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about mobile security from the perspective of real world. Um, I'm, I'm not going to be talking about how it should be, how Cisco sees this, how Juniper sees this, how Motorola sees this, how the business sees this. I'm going to, to, to look at it from the perspective of the real world. This is based on um, my own wireless system at home and about 100 uh, wireless assessments uh, across all uh, well, maybe not all, but across uh, the majority of platforms we can find today, from small WLANs to extremely large WiMAX deployments. So what you are going to, to find here is very subjective, is different from what you will hear otherwise, and I hope that somebody won't agree. Okay, do you understand me? Everybody, good. Okay, so... Mobile is very bad from a security perspective. We already had plenty of problems with security when nobody was moving. Now we have the problem of security of people moving, companies moving, users moving, and end users moving. Uh, there are obvious issues, which is uh, no wires. So at a certain time, everybody was afraid of wires going through toilets and so on. They should not go through toilets. We don't have this problem because now they are everywhere. Um, there is no sense of connection to a network, especially from a end user perspective. Before, a user had this cable, has these little things, IP addresses, which had to ask, he, had, uh, he needed to ask for. Now, end users connect, and they don't have the perspective of connecting to something dangerous. So, there is a loss of 
um, of sense of connection. This is extremely important if you survey typical end users, you will find that uh, they, they don't feel they are connected to a dangerous network, especially in 3G, etc. TCP IP, of course, was not designed for security, and it was absolutely not designed for mobile. Uh, TCP IP was designed for nuclear bombs, but not for security and not for mobile. The, the TCP IP we have now is, is uh, not a good solution. And everyone is connected. So you are connected and somebody who is connected very far away from you can be in touch with you very easily, much easier than before. Now this say it may be a queue. This is not a, a, a mistake. It's, it shouldn't be there may be a queue. This may be the queue. Wireless issues are starting to be the queue for the security of data in general. I'm going to be back to this in a second. Okay, page down. Enterprise mobility. So first of all, we have 802.11, the typical um, you know, wireless uh, at the office, which works or does not. We have web, we have WPA, we have Mac filtering. You know all of this, right? You know the weaknesses, how to break in 30 seconds, or I don't know, maybe now 12 seconds, into, um, into a web network, WPA, you can break it uh, sometimes, sometimes you cannot, it depends, etc. So this is, this is something you know. The, the big problem we have now for enterprise-wide solutions is authentication authorization. It's, um, it's, it's weak. It's, th there are solutions, but the, the solutions are always an add-on. The wireless initially was not prepared to be something which is very wide. So somebody coming with, um, with a laptop should connect both in Tokyo and in Krakow and in Paris and in Los Angeles. This was not intended to be so. All major companies want it to be this way. Um, my company, who is a wireless company, ah, yeah, okay, zero advertisement here, no, uh, no breaks for, for commercials, nothing. Um, um, this is completely uh, generic in terms of, of uh, equipment. Motorola, who is um, uh, an expert in wireless, went through four waves of wireless systems. Four waves, all of them were, were equally bad or good, it depends on who you ask. Four different kind of authorization. You needed to authorize 120,000 people across 170 locations worldwide. So there were four solutions which were used, one after the other, and none of it really worked or was secure. It wasn't this or that. Now there is something which is more or less okay. 802.11n, the new standard, which is almost there, um, interestingly enough, there are, there are uh, providers who will give you devices which are 802.11n co compliant, but there is no standard yet. 802.11n is uh, the standard which is supposed to say goodbye to wires. This is exactly what 802.11g was too. When 802.11g appeared, everybody said, this is the end of wires, you can go wireless in a whole enterprise, no worries. If you go to an enterprise, you will see plenty of wire all over the place. So 802.11n, now when you look at the ads, everybody says, really, this time this is it. So they will see. WiMAX. WiMAX is the new fancy thing in, um, in wireless. A lot of companies are going there. It's a fantastic system because at least uh, four or five people from security were invited in the design. So they, they brought in some concepts like authentication, mutual authentication, encryption, etc. It's in the standard. Unfortunately, it's not used. Um, slowly, WiMAX is going ahead. If you look around, if you look at some folders. I don't have my folders here. There is one folder here. Yeah, trends. If you look at the trends, I'm pretty sure you'll find WiMAX somewhere. I hope. I, there should be. If you try to look up a WiMAX network worldwide, you'll have a hard time. There are WiMAX networks, and I'm going to show you where they are. And I'm going to show you why I'm so unhappy not to have the SCADA presentation. But, uh, but WiMAX is a fantastic standard, it's just it's not used. Now, users, 
bring now their own stuff. They used to bring in their own laptops, which was already a problem for a company. Now they bring in the iPhone, uh, ATN M700, uh, you name it. All the small devices which connect to a, to a wireless LAN. Now, the question is whether it's a good or bad thing. I don't know. Google thinks it's a good thing. Google decided to go generic in terms of, of uh, hardware. You, can, you will be able soon to bring whatever you want being a Google, um, uh, uh, a Google employee, uh, you'll be able to bring whatever you wish and work on whatever you wish. And everything is going to be supported. All major companies have this idea. They go from, let's go wild and see what's going to happen, to, let's go to virtualization. Virtualization is the next big thing in security and everybody's excited. I'm not sure why, but everybody says, it's going to be exciting because what we are going to do, you can put, you can take a, an apple and uh, a, um, a book, for instance, and put a VMware image here, and you are going to have your corporate windows in the image. I'm not sure how it helps in terms of security, but everybody is crazy about doing these kind of things now. So, um, in terms of, of mobility, uh, virtualization is, is a new word which is, um, which is coming in the gr playground too. My opinion, personal opinion uh, of myself, don't tell this to my company, is that it's not going to work. Because then you have two issues in terms of security instead of one. Then, IDS. Um, I'm a big fan of IDS. Uh, intrusion detection systems are fantastic. Intru wireless intrusion detections are fantastic. The real problem with IDS is that you see a lot of interesting things in your network, but there is nobody to check it. I mean, th th there are no employees who sit in front of the, the, the staff and look at, you know, like in movies, things are rolling throughout the screen, and there's, oh, there's a hack here. This is what, they, th this is what it is in the movies. Um, th there is a solution for that. The solution is called outsourcing. There are some fantastic security operation centers where there are people who actually look at the scrolling thing and say, whoa, that's a hack in Motorola now. And, um, and, and they do it. Um, in terms of securing your wireless, enterprise wireless network, IDS, wireless IDS combined with a real, real analysis of what's going on is the solution. Then you can see whether your wireless devices actually work as they should, and you can detect some new stuff appearing on the network. <coughs> I should have this thingy here. Page down. Okay, user mobility. So we witness who of you travel a lot in the world. Okay? Say what, three people? More? One, two, three. Okay. Okay. Have you ever been in an airport and open your laptop in the airport like everybody does because everybody is bored and you see um, free Wi-Fi access? Have you seen it? If you have not, you don't travel. Because normally this is what everybody sees. You open, you have um, Orange, you have a T-Mobile thing, you have to pay for, you have to pay for, you have to pay for, and suddenly free Wi-Fi access. If you closely look at the thing, you will see that it's an ad hoc network. It's not an access point, it's an ad hoc network. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first worldwide wireless WOM. This is a uh, WOM which is, uh, um, it's the fault of the Windows users, don't mind me, who automatically agree, this is a, uh, uh, from my own laptop, so you see, I don't agree. But people tend to agree to automatically connect to non-preferred network, which means you see a network which is, you have to pay for it, you have to pay for it, you have to, suddenly a network which is free, open, and boom, your computer connects there. So you, create, you connect to an ad hoc connection, which doesn't do any harm, except that the next day when you are in Tokyo, you open your laptop and you provide an ad hoc connection to the world. So somebody else opens their laptop, you pay, you pay, you pay, boom, and they connect to this. This is, if you, if you go somewhere, I, um, I saw this probably for the last a year and a half, maybe two years. For these two years, almost now, every, everywhere you go, you open your laptop, you see it. So it's, 
it's, um, it's a disease, like in the Matrix movie you've seen here. It's something which doesn't do any real harm, actually, but it's the first thing which is purely wireless. It has nothing to do with anything else. It's just people who connect to everything they see. And especially when it says free. I actually it says free porn. Then you, it's shy of, oh, that's a good idea. That should be the name, free porn act connection. Okay, next one, Wi-Fi. <coughs> so, um, the risk for users' mobility, I don't really think there are real risks. It's the same as everywhere else. It's not that you are go to wireless, that you go to a wild world. It's just that you can connect to anything, including the free porn stuff. Um, the people usually know that they are in um, a, a dangerous place when they connect in an airport. However, they don't really care. Uh, there are plenty of uh, man-in-the-middle attacks. Oh, attacks, it's a big word. It's uh, somebody who says um, airport connection, and people connect there. And actually, they do connect to Internet afterwards. Unfortunately, all the traffic goes through somebody who set up a ROG access point. So there are no real risks. If, if you use uh, Google Mail, you are not at risk. Because your, your thing is going to be encrypted anyway. Your traffic is encrypted anyway. But, um, but the, the, the only risk is that people do not really think about where they connect to. But they should know. 3G. 3G is, um, uh, is 3G? It's, uh, it's the mobile uh, access to Internet you are given. The handsets are very slow. Um, you know, in, in security, as you know, uh, it's good to have some buzzwords sometimes. So we had virtualization, we had the free porn access, and now we have handset dangers or handset hacking or something like this. I work in this field and I've never seen it. it there are surely some very dangerous hacks and terrible things happening to plenty of people around the world. I've never seen it. So there is some malware which people say there is for, for handsets. They are so slow, they are so weak. Whatever you want to do on a handset is, imagine, let me just take, except for one handset, of course, which is my handset. This is Motorola. Thank you. Um, oops, sorry, I made a picture. How can you browse for hours on this? I mean, you can check the TV program or, or, or you know, some basic news, but nobody is ever going to, to, to surf for a long time. You can watch TV, maybe, but, but the, the reality is that this is not a good target. Nobody is going to take the time to try to hack into something like this while you have people connecting to free porn on, um, on the airport. Bluetooth, on the other hand, is nice, is a great target. Bluetooth has the advantage of not being recognized by, by the user as a wireless network connection. They see it as the connection to the, uh, to the car, to sometimes 0.3% of the population sending a file, usually getting uh, you know, the, um, the, the hands-free system on. Um, there was a, a, um, a strong attack last year, and it's still going on now, where people were bugged to accept an incoming Bluetooth connection. You, you were sitting on your place and, uh, you know, watching something or phoning somebody, and say, plum, connect to the plum, connect to... You don't even have the time to say no, big plum, connect to the network. Of course, the solution is to... Switch off, this is the best solution, but you know, people are somehow, they feel that if they switch it off, something in their brain switches off too, so they don't want to switch off. What's the solution for this? Sorry? Sorry? Hide what? People, a solution for normal people like me. I mean, people who do not really understand what is beyond typing their phone numbers here. Go away! Go beyond 10 meters or 20 meters or 30 meters. Go to the next seat on the other side of, and you are done because of the, uh, of the range. People were doing what somebody says here, and I would be doing this. As well. He has accepted, finally. If he really wants, there must be a reason for that. And especially... <laughs> and es <laughs> and especially that... Um, 
the, the name for this, uh, for this attack was something like f uh, firmware updating or, you know, it sounded professional. It sounded like they want to give me something more, so why not? And uh, the, the, the real solution was just to go away a little bit and you were done. It was a very, 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 very successful attack, especially on airports, where people either connect to this phone thing or try to work on their phone. Then the next idea was the providers said, okay, maybe we could help the users by charging them $23.99 per month, help the users to protect against something. So some providers, when you connect to, uh, to providers, the provider offers you the possibility to install, to push software, um, antivirus, anti-malware, anti-something software on your, on your machines. Don't smile. You are, you know, when in terms of security knowledge you are around this lamp here, the typical, knowledge, the typical user, your typical customer when you work in a company is... Over there. So they have no idea. For them, if somebody says antivirus, they are happy. They don't know the difference between uh, the one which is advertised over here, yes, and for instance, Symantec. So th they, they won't tell the difference. That's why, um, from their perspective, it's a good thing. The other thing is that some countries are forcing now the providers to protect the customers. This is not in Poland yet. There are some countries in the Middle East where the providers are going to be forced to connect, uh, to, to protect the customers because otherwise they will be liable for something. So uh, there is hope for that too. Then we go now, mobile IPSs. <coughs> mobile IP, IS, sorry, ISPs. Uh, mobile ISPs are plus GSM, ERA, Orange, Play. I'm not really good in the. Um, I'm in plus and I've never changed it, so maybe there are more. Anyway, these are the guys who provide you fast 7.3 megabits per second HDSPA access to internet, which ends up being GPRS access at 56k. But at least, you know, you know what you can get. <coughs> so they are in trouble. First of all, because it's a pass-through technology. The password technology is a technology when you have a bad guy over here, then you have your whole network over there, and a bad guy over here. So your whole network, the, the bad guys go through your whole network. It's different from, for instance, a company which has a web portal where the bad guys are all over there. So you have to protect over here. Um, there is a major problem currently with um, with the ISPs. If you work in security, if you do, if you want to go to do good money in security, the first field where you can do good money, except for consulting, is what? Critical infrastructure, people. This is the thing you can get money in because plenty of big companies, read oil companies, gas companies, and so on, want to protect their critical infrastructure now. The second one is protecting the ISPs. They have a hard time now dealing with uh, sometimes fast connection and bad guys on, the, on both sides. You have your, the, the core, the operation environment, so the environment they go through, is not ready for security. It's a complete mix. If you look, if you try tonight, don't do it too much because it's expensive, but if you try tonight to connect to your provider and do a simple trace route, through the, through the network, you will see that in many cases, you will see the IPs. Um, it's not going to be, you know, star, 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 and then internet. It's going to be 10.11.22.23, then 1 night, and so on. You go through all their network. So they have a hard time dealing with, with this security. Um, the other problem is that the vendors of, um, of core networks, so the vendors who uh, sell this network, their main thing is to make sure that it's fast, that the calls are not dropped, that it's optimized, blah, blah, blah. then it's something that it has nice colors, then it do nice, nice sounds, and at the end you have security. 
and the budget cut is somewhere here, usually. So the, the, there, is a, there is a major problem with this environment not being ready right now for security. Uh, for the last two years, there is a huge increase of demand in terms of assessments, security assessment for these environments. It's a complete mix of internal, external traffic. These people uh, who, who set up these networks usually do not, uh, do not really feel, for instance, where to place a DNS. A DNS is a fantastic place to start an attack or end an attack even. Um, and when you look at the, the, the topologies, some put it outside, some put it inside. It's visible that people are not really sure where to put these uh, strange things. When you ask them about a GGSN, I'm sure, do you know, anybody knows what the GGSN is? Okay, three people. Anybody knows what the DNS is? 79 people. So <laughs> you can see that you understand that a DNS, how DNS works and the DNS is important. They understand what a GGSN is and how the GGS should work. There is a problem because the security is here. The GGNS is a very dumb device. Then you have anonymous access. You can buy a, a prepaid card for, I don't know, 20 slotties. And, uh, and you're done. You can, accept, uh, you can access anonymously. Nobody is going to track you. Nobody is not even going to be able to, to trace you, it's except for some movies. But nobody, nobody is going to be able to, to, to trace you. This is a good access to do some hacking, especially in high-speed um, high networks. <coughs> then critical infrastructures. I had to put a slide here because um, I feel that the mobility and wireless part hits very, very much critical infrastructures. Okay, first question. Was there anything about wireless in, criti in SCADA systems? <laughs> okay, so I, as I told you many times, SCADA is the target. It's, um, it's a dump, it's not protected, it's old, it's simple IT. People who run it are interested in opening a valve and closing a valve more than making sure that this, this is secure. The users are unaware and it BAM! When it happens, it really happens BOOM! Like, uh, really I have my presentation over there in case, just in case. It's, it's a big bang. Critical infrastructure is a super big bang and especially the super big bang is on oil price when Aramco, for instance, which is the largest um, uh, oil um, company in the world, gets hacked. If they get hacked, you will see the, dollar, the, 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 the oil, which is around now 120 maybe or $15 uh, per barrel, whoo, just skyrock. It's going to be the end of the world if they are hacked. You can imagine you hack a system which is simpler than... Windows, probably, <laughs> and, at, and, and it's the end of the world. I walk my dog around the place where you filter the water here in Krakow. There is a, now you can, you can walk around the place. You just jump the fence. There are no alligators. There are no dogs. There are not armed people. There are no, in Aramco, at least you have a lot of desert before you get to, to the SCADA system. You get in, you break in, it's the end. So, there is even a movie about that. I didn't see the movie, but I think it's the movie with this guy. Uh, Die Hard, yes. Yeah. And I think he, they do fantastic things with SCADA system. I, I must watch this movie one time. So, um, SCADA now goes wireless. So, you have a SCADA system, which is terribly bad in any possible idea. I mean, if you wanted to design how to badly design a security system, you say, look for SCADA. Interestingly enough, it's a system which is not even designed with security. Modbus, which is the, uh, the protocol which runs there, is a super dumb protocol. And it's okay, because the, the idea was, we want to open a valve, and we want to be damn sure that the valve is going to open. Even if there are camels walking around, if there, even if it's a plus, 53 or minus 300, it has to work. And you have this big cable, serial cable, which goes to the field. It better be a simple, normal, easy signal to go to. No things like authentication, authorization, double tick. We don't touch this. So, SCADA is terrible already. Now, SCADA goes wireless. Most of the SCADA systems sold today are wireless. 
Interestingly enough, I am, ladies and gentlemen, certified, I must remember this, certified SCADA security architect. Now, there is no standard for SCADA security. And still there are people who are certified in this. And they go to conferences and they talk like me. And they talk about SCADA security while there, there is no standard. This is the state of what we have today. Um, SCADA today goes wireless, means that the connection between, uh, between the PCL, the device which, uh, opens, well, which uh, steers the opening and closing of the valves, and the SCADA system somewhere there, and internet very close, is wireless. It usually goes through WiMAX. WiMAX is a fantastic system. Uh, it is used in SCADA systems. It's nice because it's, uh, it's strong, it has encryption and so on. And companies who sell SCADA systems, I'm not saying that they are bad companies, they are very good companies, but they say, we sell you a secure system because the connection between this SCADA monitoring place and your PCL, so the thing which opens and closes the valves, is encrypted. It's even encrypted 2,000 bytes, bits. Whatever you want. 512 bits, fine. They, they are going to encrypt whatever you want. The problem is that um, either it's a long distance and you get to the, to the PCL and you just connect your port here and you do what you want to do. And then you go through a highly encrypted system to make sure that nobody is going to disturb you on the way. Or you go from the other side and then it's even better because nobody is going to disturb you on the highly encrypted system. Yes, it makes it more difficult today for people to, conne to, to connect to this, but um, let's get real. In the real places, when you have a, a, a SCADA system, there are fences, there are alligators, there are dogs, there are people armed, they shoot without asking who you are, there is desert, there are snakes, horrible things. So before you get to the wire even, or the wireless, you'll have to walk for three days, you know, hiding in the sun. So um, I wouldn't really worry about this, this, uh, this, the security of this part, because everything else is completely insecure. I mean, if you want, if you think, today if you took a shower, then you are thinking, what next I am going to read about in security to get, you know, uh, nice during uh, casual conversation after a conference, things scatter. SCADA is really the thing to go for. Now, the organizer, you should have given me this subject. <laughs> no, just kidding. So, like I told you, um, uh, if, if uh, the, the Federal Drug Administration is in charge of, of uh, setting the standards for that, we are in trouble. We are in uh, super big trouble. Okay, so what? What now? There is a solution. There is a holy grail solution. There is a solution which is going to solve all our problems. There is a solution. If I knew how to do it, I would patent it, and I wouldn't be here. I would be doing uh, like you know this prayer um, protect <laughs> being in places with beaches near SCADA systems. So the solution is to protect the data today. And this is what I told you seven slides before that it may be the cure, the, the issues with mobility may be the cure. Today, we do not protect data. We protect, fire, we protect firewalls first, then we protect OS systems, then we protect PHP installations, then we protect MySQL, Oracle, whatever installation. Then we protect this and protect that. At the end of the day, somebody displays something that's saved in an Excel file and takes it on a thumb drive and he's gone. So, we are super protected. We have all the systems, all the firewalls. We spend $73 million on our infrastructure and our data is gone. Okay, it's too complicated to, to, to use the thumb drive thing. You just send it through Google Mail account. There is plenty of space. I have six gigs of place while the important thing take maybe 100K. So, you just send it by email. And our 73 uh, uh, million installation goes down the toilet. So the, sol the ground solution is to protect the data. It's going very, very slowly ahead. Protecting the data means if I create a Word file in which it sa I say the password for my firewall is... 
I have to have the possibility to protect this, not to encrypt, but to, pro to make sure that if, I, if it's in the hands of many people, I can say I don't want anybody to read it from now. There are solutions which are going slowly. It's completely against the mainstream of security today. The mainstream of security today is firewalls, sorry, firewalls and slowly out of perimeter systems. Slowly. The mainstream is here. Unfortunately, the reality is over here. We will meet in 23 years, and I will take off this slide because this is going... By then, probably, we'll have a solution. Does it have to do anything with mobility? Nothing. It's the same thing when you have wires or no wires, the same problem. Is it easy to do? It's not easy to do. Uh, if you want to see some potential solutions, Google liquid machines. This is uh, uh, one of the many companies who try to introduce this solution. Okay, so if we don't uh, do this, let's try to protect the ac access. First of all, think whether it's worth protecting the access. You probably have a wireless network at home, which you are security experts all over the place, so you protected it with everything, starting with uh, WPA2+, setting a horribly long password which nobody remembers, putting MAC filtering, shotguns when somebody connects, etc. Now, think, is it worth? Is it worth the effort? Is it worth the bandwidth? You have 54 megs, theoretically, in a G network. Realistically, you may end up with 20. Soon, I hope, uh, Krakow is going to have ADSL 2+, plus, and you are going to have 25 megs per second of connectivity. You are going to hit the problem of having uh, your, your bandwidth hogged with your security. I think, personally, my personal opinion and my personal network is not protected. It's open. I just do MAC filtering, and I even broadcast my SSID. I just do MAC filtering, because I assume that if somebody, in 99.99999% of the cases, nobody is going to be able to go through this very complicated security measure, which is MAC filtering. So I'm pretty sure that the 0.00001% of the people who are going to snoop in my garden are going to be eaten by my dog. So uh, this is, think about whether it, it, it is worth protecting your network. Um, there is one very interesting solution in, protection, in, in um, net, uh, wireless access protection. I don't have the link here, but it's a guy who was a little bit fed up of people taking his, his bandwidth and downloading plenty of porn, you know, and taking all his bandwidth. So what he did, he, um, he created a pool of addresses for him and his uh, systems, and they were going fine into Internet. Then if somebody out of this pool of uh, MAC addresses in that case was trying to access, that person gets properly the, the connection, but then their web browsing goes through image magic, if I remember correctly, which flips around the pictures. So people stand here, they connect to um, xlasky.pl, and <laughs> so they turn around the laptop, but then they have problem clicking because the text is okay. The text goes fine, and then the pictures are rotated, and uh, he... Even on his page, he, saw, he showed uh, a large decline of connection on his network. Because people thought that, I'm pretty sure that a lot of people went to a shop to change their laptops because something was wrong. <laughs> so if, if you need to protect, first think whether it's worth protecting. So if you are looking for protection in wireless, currently the only reasonable protection is NAC, is network access control. It's an idea of having your devices asking, well, your network environment, your network infrastructure, asking your device whether it should be there. It's a conversation. So the Cisco does this, for instance, or Juniper, or others too. They ask, okay, who are you? And he answers, and they check. And then he answers whether he is connected to the right place. And they answer. And all of this is, is done through an exchange of, it usually works. Then the, uh, the system asks, are you properly patched? He says, yes. Are you properly antivirus protected? He says, yes. And then we give you access. More or less, this is, this is the idea. Of course, it's not built in in any standards we have. Everybody does it its own way. It works more or less, reasonably okay. If you, if you want today to protect your, your access, go for NAC. But then 
let's the facts. Let's face the facts. First, no more perimeter. You can forget about having your systems protected from the evil outside and the very good inside. With wireless, with uh, connectivity through your firewall, if you look after the firewall in a large company, let's pick Motorola. The, ma the, big, the major firewall entry for Motorola lists, I don't know, 5,000 ex exceptions for connections. All of them are, p are fantastically um, documented, but it's a lot of exceptions for a firewall, you know. So, realistically, there is no perimeter. As many people are going to access through exception than properly to your network. And realistically, the layer 5 or 6, so the very, very high layer, is your only protection. So if you go for uh, SSL, you are reasonably, reasonably assured that between your browser and uh, Google Mail, you are going to be protected, no matter whether you go through wireless, wired, and so on. I don't believe personally in protecting the, the RF, the, the, the radio part of the network. Protecting it assumes that otherwise you are fine. Really, the only protection you have today, and this is not a big thing, so you don't have to clap afterwards, is to protect through application systems. That's all. Okay, I think I am done. Yes. I am done. So, if um, there are some things you would like to ask for, and I am ashamed to ask you, related to security and wireless especially, um, feel free. I'm going to be around for some time. Otherwise, there is a contact thing. And now I hope that there is going to be a, a, a hurricane of people who do not agree with what I said. Yes, good. Ooh -hoo. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. I like Windows a lot. I don't, I don't know if I, I said I like Windows a lot. I'm a very dumb Windows user. I, um, I can log in. I know there are some holes, and I patch my Windows every day. Now ask. Okay, um, I really enjoyed your presentation. It was really, really good. But I just, I just need to disagree with one thing. Good. Well, I believe you're missing one important point, which is the biggest problem with Wi-Fi security is not the problem that somebody going to do the traditional man in the middle on to something like steal my bandwidth. The biggest problem is the potential for injection of client-side ex exploits, for example, for my browser. So give you an example of, a, of an airport lounge. So let's say I connect to T-Mobile. I'm not connecting to this free porn, whatever, right? So let's say I'm connecting to Team. I did, I did. <laughs> Which of, so let's say somebody gives a, a different access point, which pretends to be T-Mobile. Let's say I don't care about stealing my credentials. Let's say they're going to provide me with, a, with proper connection. The problem is they can still inject actively an exploit to my web browser even though I try to use some proper website, even though I try to connect to Google Mail, which is my HTTPS, the moment I'm trying to connect, they might inject an exploit and compromise my browser. This is the biggest problem that I perceive, I see in Wi-Fi. The, um, the problem here is that, yes, it's true. Now, is a wired connection more secure? Is the guy who sits next to you, uh, you are connected through a crappy switch or hub uh, within the lounge, and uh, you, you, you connect through a wire. I'm not saying it's more secure. I'm saying this is a problem. Uh, I'm just saying this is a problem because you said you it is not a problem. Y look, this is, why, this is why realistically only protecting at the, at the application layer or beyond the application layer is a solution, no matter if it's wired or wireless. I understand your point. It's easier. But, I to, mean make, but to make this really realistic in today's world, we would have to trans, trans, transition completely to HTTPS. Because if we allowed HTTP, for example, for BBC website, yeah. then everything is lost. So to make this 
uh, your, your last bullet really realistic, we would have to transition the whole world to HTTPS. No, no. Um, if I look at um, what I watch, I see Viedomosjonet.pl, uh, for instance, which is a uh, um, for the yes, a news news of the world. If they say that the normally I would see that the president is happy with the prime minister, and if somebody injects me something saying that they are not no, happy, again, this is not the problem. They're not going to inject you fake news. This is not what we are worrying about. What we are worrying about, they're going to inject you an exploit. Which in my an exploit that would exploit your browser. Okay, but in that case, yes, I, I agree. This but it's really not difficult. Yes, however, wireless just makes it easier. It but doesn't. It doesn't enable it as opposed to not being able to do it otherwise. It just makes it easier. I fully agree. Yes. It make, made it dramatically easy. Yeah, it, uh, of course. And uh, wireless in in uh, in the office makes it easier for people to snoop from the the, the traditional uh, parking lot. Absolutely, yes. There are no boundaries. It's, it's all open. I agree. That's why if you want to do secure stuff, you either go for VPN and then you connect into your company network or you go through HTTPS. Uh, if, you, if you can have stuff injected to your, to your browser and the browser is... Um, is um, buggy. Yes, it's buggy and, and it's exploitable from this point. Which everybody, br which all the browsers are, right? Well, I don't know. Besides WGET. Sorry? Maybe. Besides WGET, maybe. WGET... <laughs> Um, I think that wireless makes this thing easier. It's not an enabler. It makes this thing easier. You can always face somebody who is going through the same thing in other ways. I agree with you. It may, it's easier. No, That's my why only when, point, when my I... The only point is, because you said... There is no point in securing Wi-Fi because it's not worth. I'm saying it is very worth considering. <laughs> Look, I live in a place where my signal maybe reaches the, the street. Maybe somebody is going to drive there and no, maybe it's not going to be attacked by anybody else. But again, do you so travel a lot? It depends on How often do you open your laptop in a lounge? In a lounge? Okay. All the time. Right. All, and I browse all the time. And and uh, I connect to to hotspots which I even don't identify. I how mean, it how says. How do you make sure your browser is not exploited by somebody? I use Internet Explorer. <laughs> <laughs> I am not sure, and I will never be sure, and I can be hacked like anybody. Um, if I feel that I am reasonably safe uh, doing my... Define reasonably. Define reasonably. That's a good question. Reasonably safe for, me, uh, safe for me is that when I do stuff which is critical to my work. For instance, I have information which should never get off the laptop. This information works in a, in a virtual image which lives on its own on my laptop and it's used only when I'm properly connected. Yes, it's possible to always put keyloggers, which I'm not aware of. It, th everything is possible. But then, if we, if we assume that this is going to happen, then nobody should ever connect. I'm wo I, I work in lounges. Um, I travel around 70% of my time. So I spend a lot of time in lounges connected to any possible connection. I've never been infected. Which is, by of course, not a, a, a big thing because I patch regularly. But it's only, only thi the only thing I do. How do you know? I just way? patch. How do you know? Sorry? How do you know you've never been infected? Well, I hope. Out of curiosity. <laughs> I don't know. I, I still have my work. The, uh, the shares are still fine. But you know that the biggest threat we are afraid of is not somebody well, breaking your laptop, making it explode or something... What we are mostly afraid of is that they're just going to steal your data, but silently. Yes, but let's get, let's get real. In a, in a normal world, I don't know, 95, whatever, percent of the population use Windows. Don't you Windows. see Chinese companies coming up with similar cell phones? Sorry? Don't you see Chinese companies coming up with similar cell phones as Motorola? But similar I what? Ah, but, yeah, oh. but you know, if you look at China, it's easier. Instead of stealing my information, it's just enough to uh, apply the law, which says that everybody who works in, a, in an international company 
goes to a kiosk which is on, on the street and provides what he was working for before, well, during the day. So there are easier ways to steal this information than to steal it from me. Uh, people who are going to do it at airports are not going to steal randomly information from Nokia, from Motorola, from, uh, I don't know, Ernst Young, whoever goes to these lounges. They are going to look for credit card numbers. They are going to, to, to look for, for keyloggers to get to your, your bank accounts if you are in the U.S. I don't think so, actually. Maybe uh, botnets would be interested more in credit yes. card numbers. However, somebody who gonna go to the lounge, go to a lounge, where which we you know like business class lounges, which we expect to to have some well influential people there. I would rather suspect that those people in lounges would be preparing targeted attacks against executives yeah, and okay. trying to steal information. Yeah, but the the the, the lounge are not the the access is not protected. It just protects you through a, a credit card number. I mean, you have to pay to get in. But again, Th there, are, there is no extra browser. protection on top of but this. But again, exploding a browser get access to your laptop, to your maybe yeah, okay, secret but image. But you cannot protect it at the at the Wi-Fi level, which is a problem. I, 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 it is a problem, but it's it's what we have today. I mean, we have today the problem of of uh, solutions which are I mean, WPA is 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 reasonably reasonably good, but would it's you, completely would you agree usable. With me? Would you agree with me then that we should look into ways to protect Wi-Fi? Sorry. Should we look into ways to protect Wi-Fi at layers below 5 or uh, not? Protecting? Should, should we or not? Should we pursue such a protection or not? It depends on where you are. If you have a network which... With the we, we are talking about the current solutions. If you have a, a network which is at home and you protect it with solutions like WPA, you hide your SSID, so you lose your connectivity from time to time, it's not worth it. It's not worth. Worst case, well, WPA, you get hacked. WPA doesn't have anything to do with hiding SSID, does it? No, no. I mean, if you if you do if you use WPA, if you hide your SSID, if you put a MAC filtering, if you put extra layers of security or, or parallel layers of security, you can do all of this. But you end up with a almost no, unusable no, no, no. stuff. I'm sure. I'm sure we all know that hiding SSID and using MAC filter does not increase security in any way. Yes, it, it does. It doesn't. Absolutely, <laughs> it does. It increases the security However, of 99.99% 99 in my case. WPA. I mean, my neighbors are never going to go through a MAC filtering system. Never. They are never going. Of course, there is still the 0.01% of people who might be interested in my super interesting thing at home. Maybe. But it's, it stops 99% of the people. Hiding SSID, I'm not for because it's a, there are problems with connectivity afterwards. But putting a simple MAC filtering, I'm pretty sure that if you put this... I would stand for, okay, 98%. I would stand for 98% of better protection. So you are protected many, many times more. But of there course is no point protection. to use MAC filter protection and SSID hiding if we use WPA, which is like 1,000 times stronger protection. Of than course of it them. is. Of course and it WP, is. WPA uh, is not really annoying to you. Yes, but the problem is that this device, this device doesn't understand WPA. Oh, it understands WAP. It has no Wi-Fi, actually. But... Um, <laughs> But if you if you took if you take a device with Wi-Fi, these devices are too 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 small, too slow to work with WPA. They have web. You can you can protect by web. Well, which I have is this, not the I have this really small device I can show you, and it actually understands WPA. Yes, it uh, probably uh, does. My E10 7 uh, M700, which is a device which is maybe two years old. Is it thin enough for you? Sorry. Is it thin enough for you? It understands nice. WPA. I mean, it's super, but it's a it's a device you it's know Apple. pure. Why everybody uses these devices over here? I mean, if we want to be, either we can be super secure, because it's possible to be super secure. You go, you tempest everything around, and you are super secure, or you can get somehow closer to, to, to the world of usability. But we are and not talking really about, because you make it sound like if it was a rocket science to, to exploit your browser at the airport. I would say preparing an exploit for you would cost probably $5,000. Yeah, maybe. Maybe 10,000. Maybe. Right, if you really use the, the very new Vista IE. Uh, is it really, you, you think, a lot of mana? Is it really something that is like so much uh, improbable to happen? It is because probable. I would say, because you're executive, right? So you travel a lot. So you should really 
consider this scenario, as you say, for the 0.1%, not 99%, because you would not be exposed to your neighbors mostly, but maybe to people who are competition to you and try to see information from your laptop. You know, Just like many other executives. If, if they follow me, if they want to invest $5,000 in following me personally, they will steal my laptop. They will kill me somewhere in, in, a, in a wild country and they will steal my laptop. Not really. I but mean, I assume, I'm, assume, I'm down but to I earth. assume you are using uh, some kind of uh, hard disk uh, encryption and stealing your laptop would not provide anything to the Maybe they right? don't know. Or oh, maybe they will torture me to open it. No, but I, I, go, I go real world. I mean, there is this... Um, um, Torturing is more expensive than $5,000. <laughs> Oh, it depends on the place. It depends on the place. Wojtek, Asha, I'm afraid there is not going to be a good moment to stop this discussion, but I think it is a... She... <laughs> she won. I know you're having a good time, and we yes. as well. I think it is a great occasion to take Asha for a beer or coffee yes. and discuss all of it, and I hope your laptop and yourself are really safe. Yes, my laptop is not here. As unfortunately, we've run out of time, yes. but of course we can continue the discussion uh, after the conference. I will I eat hope my pen drive now. <laughs> so thank you very much. And Maybe there is, there are, okay, we, we can go on with this. Maybe there are other questions, uh, easier questions. <laughs> <laughs> questions on the side. I you are completely right, but I, I have, have a very light more. question. How big is your dog in the garden? Sorry, how big? <laughs> It's more a cow. It's more a tiger, you know. Thank you very, very much. Okay, so this was uh, our last lecture.